Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So in this video, we're gonna start getting into some more of the nitty gritty and for a lot of people confusing bits to do with adding or subtracting negative integers. And in this video, I'm gonna do my best to try to give you a couple of analogies and number patterns to try to explain some of the differences that happen when we add or subtract negative integers. So before we're dealing with positive integers, now we're looking at negative ones. And this is where it starts to get hard. This is what gives a lot of people issues. So I wanna come at this from two different approaches. So one of these, is one I just found in a textbook, and this does a pretty good job of it. And then the next one is gonna be an analogy that I hope gives you some of the intuition as to how this, how these operations with negative numbers work. And then we're gonna tie it all together and apply it to a couple of questions. So we're gonna first look at addition Then we're going to look at subtraction. Okay. And I'm going to do a couple of operations and see if we can spot a pattern that's happening. So if I have 2 plus 2, that equals 4. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 2 plus 0 equals 2. So two and then a blank equals one, two and a blank equals, actually, that kills the whole point of what I was trying to do. Sorry about that. Now, looking at these numbers, what do we see, what kind of patterns do we see happening here? Well, I'm working with additions all on this side and What's happening to the numbers I'm adding? Well, they're constantly getting smaller. And what happens to the answers? Well, my answers in the same way as these numbers, they're getting smaller by one. And if we know anything about adding and subtracting, we can um, make sure that these are correct. But we can see that as I go between each of these numbers, I'm going down by one. So I'm minusing one, my numbers are getting smaller. Now it's important to know this isn't the actual operation. This is just an observation that we made. So if I start adding smaller and smaller and smaller numbers, as we would suppose, I'm going to, the results I'm gonna get are gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller by the same amount, by one. Now. What's the next smallest number? What's one number less than zero? Well, if I look on my number line, I'll just quickly draw one. We have zero, one, two, three. If I have on the left-hand side of my zero, I'm gonna start going into the negative numbers here. So, the next number, the next smallest number is going to be negative one, right? So if I go two plus negative one, well, what do you think it's gonna happen? Based on the pattern we've seen, it should go down by one again. So the answer I'm gonna get is going to be one. Okay, and one more time, I have two plus, what's one number, one more number less than negative one? Well, that's gonna be the next lowest, the next lower integer is gonna be minus two. And here I get, well, if I keep following my pattern, which is what we've observed, in these three times before, I'm also gonna go down by one. And I get to 
zero here. Now, one of the really, the key ideas that I wanna to touch on here is mainly, I mean, we know this type of stuff. This is just kind of revision of addition that we've seen before. This was just to find a pattern, but I'm more concerned, sorry. I'm more concerned with what's actually happening in these last two examples. Because let's ignore these operations, for example, this and this. How do, what other operation, or what's the other easiest way to get to one from two? Well, I don't know about you guys, but to me, an easy way to get from two to one is just to subtract one, take away one. And an easy way to get from two to zero, even just think back to my number line, right? Getting from two, getting from two to one, I'm gonna subtract one. I'm gonna go one spot to my left here. And to get to zero, I'm gonna go, let's do it in a different color, one and two spots to my left. Now, when I go to the left on my number line, what am I actually doing? Well, I am subtracting. So that means that I can get to zero by minusing two, by subtracting two. So let's just compare what we sort of found here. Well, we saw that adding negative one to two got us the same answer as subtracting one from two. Now it's important to note that these are in essence different operations, but they lead to the same result. So let's just write that down quickly and we'll come back to this. So we can say that, so my key ideas, one of those is that adding a negative number, I'm gonna write this in the shorthand, number gives the same answer, oops, answer as subtracting that same number but positive by subtracting the same positive number. So I'm minusing the number one, which is a positive number. And here I am on the left-hand side, I'm adding a negative number. So these kind of opposite operations lead to a very same, well, identical result. So that's kind of interesting. Let's run with that a bit and look at subtraction now. So let's rub all of this out and we're gonna look at another take here. This is gonna be the idea of subtracting negative integers. So over here, I'm gonna have, let's say, okay, two minus two equals zero. We know this if we know how to subtract numbers. We have two minus one equals one. We have two minus zero equals two. And I want to find a pattern here. So what do I notice happening here? Well, I am subtracting, so two, then the number I'm subtracting here is going, well, I, I'm, I'm go from subtracting more to subtracting less. So first I'm subtracting two, that's a bigger subtraction than subtracting one, which is a bigger subtraction than subtracting zero. And what happens on my right-hand side? Well, my numbers get progressively bigger by the same little, um, by the same movement. So here, these integers are going down by one, and these are going up by one in the same, at the same rate. So 
To get from here to here, I'm adding one. To get from one to two, I'm adding one. So what would be the next number that's gonna be less than zero? So if I subtract in the same way as I did with my other example, I'm going down, I'm going from two to one to zero. The next number down is minus one. And what have I noticed happening here? Well, I've started just adding, going up by one. And you can, you can try some high numbers, for example, so like two minus three, two minus four, just to really see the pattern that's happening. But I wanna just try to limit the time we take on this. But I would expect this to end up getting to three based on the pattern, right? Maths is all about looking for patterns. Now, if I subtract the next number down, so two minus, I go from two to one to zero to minus one. On my number line, what's the next number down? Well, the next number down is minus two. And where do I arrive at? Well, if I keep going, if my pattern keeps playing out, I'm going to get to four because I am plusing one. Now, once again, the key takeaway here that I want to talk about is what's happening in these last two bits because two minus minus one gives me three. So to get from two to three, what operation can I do? Well, for me, the easiest one is, well, I know that three is one more than two. So if I add one to two, I get three. In the same way here, four is bigger than two. By how much is it bigger than two? Well, it's two more than two or two plus two. Now, this is an important takeaway as well. So we know that what we've observed here is that subtracting a negative number, negative number, once again, it's a different operation. We got to remember this because adding and subtracting are different operations, but they give the same result. So adding a negative number gives the same answer as sub, uh, sorry, uh, subtracting a negative number gives the same result or answer as adding the same positive number. So the same number except positive. Now, this leads me to another important point. And this is the idea of all of our numbers we looked at. So say two examples that we had here. So for example, two and negative two. These numbers are the same except they, well, as in the magnitude's the same. If you remember from that previous video, we talked about this. The magnitude the same is the same. They're the same size, but their sign is different. Because remember we said saying two just implies positive two. Now, I know we're probably gonna go over time. This is quite a long video, but I wanna give you one more hopefully quick analogy before we get into some some examples. And this centers around the idea of opposites, right? When we looked at positive and negative numbers, we think of these in terms of opposite things. For example, if I gain $10, so I'm, for, oh, if I, let's look at these numbers here. If I gain $2, I'm getting plus $2. But if I lose the same amount of money, I get negative $2. These are the same magnitude number. So it's the same amount of money, for example, but it's opposite. That's where the positive and negative idea comes from. These are opposite things. These are opposite operations. Same as if you remember from the first video in the series, I drew like um, 
you know, there, there was like sea level and we looked at a certain amount above or below sea level. I could measure something that's two meters above sea level. And I can also see if I went underwater, that same, something of that same size, but just under the water. So measuring from my sea level, my zero, that is going to be two less than sea level. So we're looking at opposites here. That's the essence of this topic. And I want to apply an analogy that I saw, which I thought was really cool. So let's talk about an analogy, the analogy of a party. The of a party. Now, I hope most of you have had the chance to go to a birthday party or some kind of adult party if you're a little bit older. Now, a lot of parties we go to, sometimes we have a good time, sometimes we have a bad time. And this really depends on the type of people we have at our party, right? And I promise we're going to get to this idea of adding and subtracting negative numbers in just a second. But let's make a party. Let's think of a party as a scale, right? So this scale being zero is like a, a, a neutral party. So not really good, not really bad, kind of like a meh party, right? And let's look at these upper and lower ends of my number line as the measure of either a really good party, this being five. So this is gonna be a good party. And this negative five is gonna be a bad party. So say you're at a party with your friends, right? Um, it starts with you, you're, you're, you're hosting the party, right? You're one person and you end up adding two people there. Well, two people turn up to your house and they're like really good friends. They always bring good vibes, life of the party. And the party is going to get better, right? We're going to, we're going to move from, and this is the idea of adding, right? One plus two, we're adding here. So we're adding two positive people, two really good people. So my, whoops, my party gets better. It starts moving towards, hey, this is looking to be a pretty good party. I've got some positive people with me. I've got me. I like to think I'm a relatively positive person. And I've added two positive people. This will become important in a minute. Okay. But now, what if in my party, now I've got I've got three people here. And let's say, let me put some more numbers on my number line. Now, let's say one of my, someone else I know rocks up and this person's kind of like a friend that I sort of have, but you know, I, I kind of just invite him to bring up the numbers, right? It's, it's not really someone I always like hanging out with because he's quite a negative person. Once I, like I said before, this is just an analogy, right? Say I invite a negative person to this party. Um, and that person brings say three of his friends who are also pretty like negative people, right? So I'm, I'm starting at, I have three people at my party, but the amount of people is still going up. So there's the three of us, but we're adding four negative people. So we can do, yeah, let's just say four. This person brings three friends. So there's four negative people at this party, right? Is my party going to get better or is it going to get worse? Well, four negative people to three positive people, that's kind of going to, we get outweighed by the negativity, right? So where we start off at, we're kind of here, but adding a negative number is going to decrease the quality of my party. 
And it's going to go from, all right, my three good people here. And I go one, two, three, four. My party decreases to like a level, like a negative one level on my good to bad party scale. So here, my adding four, neg adding negative four people is kind of the same as, from what we observed before, subtracting four, because the quality of my party gets a little bit worse, right? So in doing so, my party's now not that good, right? Like I'm kind of here, I regret inviting the people I did. Um, and yeah, it's the, the vibe's not great, right? So what happens now if I'm at like a negative one, right? But two of those people that my friend brought, so, okay, let me actually, let's actually visualize this, right? I'll have my positive people in green. So this is me, my two friends. And I have four negative people who have brought down my party. Now, my party is at about a negative one now. So what if... I want to, oh, sorry, what if now a, a couple of, um, a couple of hours have passed and two of the people that my, that this person brought, so let's say these two, they're not having a great time. So they end up leaving, right? So I'm subtracting the two negative people from my party. So. I look at where my party's at now, right? I have, I'm at negative one, like negative one enjoyment level. I'm at minus one, but now we've subtracted two negative people. What do you think that's gonna do to the party? Well, two of the negative people have gone and the quality of my party is gonna go up, right? There's less bad vibes there. People are having a better time, right? There's more of us positive people than there are negative people. So looking at this mathematical operation, by minusing two negative people, my party gets better. And if we look at the operations that we established previously, my party is going to get better in this direction. So having negative one minus minus two is the same effect as adding two here. So now instead of being at a negative one level party, I've gone up to about a one. And this is hopefully to show you now, that's going to equal one. A couple of interpretations of adding and subtracting negative numbers. But the main idea behind this are the two points that I wrote here. So let's do a couple of questions just to practice this idea. So if I take, for example, seven plus minus two. Okay. This is the same thing, right? If we think about I'm adding two, ne I'm adding two negative people, right? My quality from my number up here of my party, if you want to go with that analogy, is going to go down. So when I add by, a, when I add a negative number, if I look at my number line, I'm not going to draw in all of these, I'm gonna go down by two. So this is the same from those dot points we wrote as seven minus two. Adding a negative number is the same as doing the opposite operation. So instead of a plus, I get a minus. And my negative two 
becomes a positive two. So I look at this idea of opposites. So adding a negative two is the same as minusing two. So I go from here down to here. Seven minus two gives me five. So conclusion for this question, seven plus minus two gives me five. Now let's take another two questions. So let's try minus two plus minus three. So I'm starting, let's say this is zero, I'm starting at negative two. And we do these in the same way, guys. If you think about our number line, right? We're still figuring out, well, where do we start at? Now, the only trick here is changing this or thinking about this in a way that we're more comfortable with. When we add a negative number, that's the same as just subtracting that number. So this is the same as writing negative two minus three. And from here, it's really easy to go, all right, cool. Well, I'm making my number smaller. I'm going in the left direction. So I'm going one, two, three spots here from negative three to negative four, and I wind up at negative five. So minus two plus minus three equals negative five. We'll do one more. And I'm going to do minus six minus minus two. Okay, so I'm subtracting a negative number here instead of adding a negative number like I did in my last few examples. And this thing here, sorry, I forgot to mention it before, but this idea of a double negative, we can think of that in everyday language, right? If someone asks you, hey, how are you? If you say, so let's actually quickly just do one more analogy. If someone asks me a question, hi, how are you? And if I answer, I'm not bad, what does this thing translate to? I'm not bad. So these are two negative things, right? Not is a, if you say I am something, we can think of that as positive. I'm not, this is a negative. And being bad is a typically negative emotion. If we're bad, that's usually quite negative. That doesn't really mean it's good. So I have two negatives here. And the translation, so if I were to translate, um, I'm not bad, this translates to, another way of saying this is I am good, which is a positive, right? This is the same idea that we talked about when we minus a negative number, that's the same as plussing. We see these examples in the everyday language we use as well. So maths carries over quite a bit, hopefully, um, if you can see from these videos. But let's actually, now that we've established that idea, so we've got three different methods of thinking about these analogies. So I have a double negative. So minus six minus minus two, that is like saying minus six plus two. Now, this is the same as adding. So if I go minus six plus two, that brings me to minus four. So I'm about to hit my recording limit, guys, but thank you so much for watching. That is how we subtract negative numbers. See you next time.